Yeah, I wanted to do a slight response to uh, this video here. At least some of it. This video was done by Elder Peshai of uh, GMS Baltimore slash GMS DC. Sometimes he teaches in Baltimore, sometimes he teaches in DC. And uh, this is his channel here, The Assidians DMV. And uh, by the way, all praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashem Rakak Wadash for giving us this knowledge, this truth. He did this video entitled, For I Delight in the Law of the Heavenly Father After the Inward Man. And this is a quote from uh, the Apostle Paul. Now, what this video has to do with is, uh, this is like a response from Elder Peshai to uh, Deacon Hakar who's who's gonna do a live show later and um you know my guess is that he would try to prove that it's really the law or the law can save us okay when we that know the truth know the exact opposite it's not the law that's going to save us not our own righteousness it's yahweh shai that's going to save us if we are a member of the elect of yahweh shai we will be definitely saved. So, uh, you know, for anyone to teach that it's the law that makes us righteous is, uh, you know, they, they do not understand the scriptures. Furthermore, my guess is that he's going to say that we have a very, uh, we have a very indifferent, apathetic attitude towards the law. We as in Great Millstone, which again, that's not the truth. Why, why the hell do you think we wear a beard on our face? We're following the law. The law says for us to wear a beard on our face. When we go out and teach, we wear garments with the border of blue and the fringes. That goes back to the law. When we go and teach on the street, that goes back to the law. That's part of the law. That's a commandment given to us by Yahweh Shimei Shai to go out on the street and teach. So if Deacon Akar says anything along the lines of we're treating the law without respect, or we, we uh, uh, teach that uh, the law isn't that important. If he says anything along the lines of that, that's slander. That's a lie. As a matter of fact, those Sakari guys learned the law from us because they came up underneath us. All right. So, you know, it remains to be seen what Deacon Hakar is going to say in his live show, but knowing him, knowing his character or lack thereof, he's going to say something like that. He's going to try to demonize us because the, the, you know what proves that? He, he, they put up the, vid, the video of the brother from, uh, they put up the video of the brother from uh, the main camp who uh, had a discussion with one of them, uh, well, a few of their members from uh, uh, New York, uh, Sakari, New York. And he, you know, they put up the video you know, uh, Alizé made this big int introduction about the video Apostle Aramla was telling me. Uh, basically, they put it up to demonize us. Because they, you know, see, that's the thing with a, with a guy who has no character. You know, he tries to pull down his, the very teacher that taught him. Okay? And that's a sign of lack, a lack of character and integrity, man. Okay? That's the move of a peasant. That's not the move of someone with a, a royal mentality. That's the move of a peasant, okay? When you try to take down the ones who taught you, especially if the ones who taught you are still teaching correctly, are still an example to the flock. And here you come, you're a novice lifted up with pride, and here you come trying to tear down the very people that taught you. That shows you have no character. That shows you have no integrity. And once again, like I always say, you're just an example of how not to be in the truth until Yahweh Bashim Yahushai remove your candlestick out of its place. It's as simple as that. I like to quote what Yahweh Shai said. He said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. You got to have blind guys that are blind, spiritually blind, leading the blind and both falling into the ditch. You got to have those guys. The prophecy got to be fulfilled. So that's why you got a group like that, that uh, the, which basically is a reprobate group. You know, I, I showed you brothers earlier, and if you saw my last video, I showed you a scripture where um, uh, this man said to Apostle Paul, aren't you that Egyptian that led out 
400 men that were murderers. That's in the, the uh, book of Acts. And when you look up the word murderers in the Greek, there you see it right there, sicarios. So that tells you everything you need to know. Okay? <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do is play some of this video here. And of course, I'm going to react to it with scriptures, of course. Hopefully, the video is edifying to you brothers out there. And uh, you few sisters that watch these videos. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. <coughs> so the guy you hear speaking here is um, Elder Peshai, right? So. Hashem Rakafadash, the honest of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, Lord, how are you? Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. So. Heavenly Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by Hashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the name of the only begotten Son, who was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their sins. By Hashem, which means in the name of the Holy Spirit, the volume of the book, the Spirit of Truth. Shalom, love, and peace to the elect. That's the men, women, and children whose names are written in the Book of Life. And what you see before you is uh, a premiere <clears throat> of a live stream, I believe it is, that's going to come up uh, in about two hours okay by uh deacon now you now you see it right here deacon destruction mode i guess that's his channel you see the title bad news great millstone says the law can't save you and indeed the law cannot save you now yahweh shai to be technical yahweh shai is a personification of the law yahweh shai is the savior but the individual laws that were given to us by our forefather Moses right now, no, they can't save us. As a matter of fact, is it not written, we shall rehearse the righteous acts. There's no way we can keep the law perfect to be justified by the law. Furthermore, Yahweh Shai died on the cross to make us what? To make us perfect. If we could perfectly keep the law, now that we've been brought back to this truth, if we could perfectly keep the law to be justified by the law, then Yahweh Shai didn't have to go on the cross and die for us. He went on the cross and died for us to make us perfect so we could be accepted. Okay? Anyway, let's move on. But, you know, this, this understanding, this simple understanding, seems to evade certain guys. Okay? Destruction, it looks like. Just deacon destruction mode. Okay? And, um, whatever uh, says what? Uh, bad news great millstone says the law can't save you and i guess the uh, narrative is to try to prove that the good news is that the, the i guess the good news will be that the law can save you right. and again that would defeat the whole purpose of yahweh shai and we've brought out many examples of that and again i'll say this to you individuals that believe that the law is what is going to make you righteous or to make you holy or make you acceptable by Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Why is it that Yahweh Shai actually had to get up on the cross if he committed no sins? If now, for those of you that believe that, that the law can actually make you perfect, the law can actually save you, you hear not knowing the scriptures. It's simple as that. Let me see if I can bring this scripture out. for a minute. Okay, this might be it. Yeah, this is it. Let's go to the book of Galatians. Galatians, that's a powerful book. Because that argument about the law this and the law that, the Apostle Paul dealt with that more than 2,000 years ago among the different churches. 
Uh, this is the book of uh, Galatians 3. And uh, okay, we're gonna uh, let's just go to the point Galatians 3 and um, 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. See? Now, in the book of the law, it speaks about phylacteries and frontlets. Now, when we look at this certain group, uh, that Sakari group, I don't see them wearing no phylacteries. And I don't see them wearing no frontlets. Yet that is part of the law. That was never abolished. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's get that law. That is uh, it's located somewhere in Exodus. So I'm just giving you an example of how it's impossible for us to keep all the laws. Okay. This is the law here. Uh, this is the book of uh, Exodus. Not Exodus. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy. 6 and 6 let's start there and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart and uh, there's certain laws we keep in our heart all right because it's not expedient this is why the apostle Paul said all things are not expedient all things are lawful but all things are not expedient this is why when we go on our job we don't wear no border of blue and fringes especially on our uniforms that's not expedient for the times that we're living in but in our heart we understand what the board of blue and the fringes represent, which is to remember the laws, statutes, and commandments. So technically, we're keeping it within our heart. And ultimately, what is the new covenant? The new covenant is where the Lord is going to place the laws, statutes, and commandments within our heart. That's, in, that's, that's the new covenant. That's what we're waiting for. When Yahweh Shai comes, that's what he's going to bring, the new covenant. And that's in the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. So that right there lets you know it's impossible for us to, within this flesh, man, as wicked as this flesh is, did not the Apostle Paul spoke about a constant war between the spirit and the flesh? A war over what? The spirit wants to do wickedly because we're sold under sin, like the Apostle Paul said, because this flesh is wicked. But the spirit, or let me say it again, the flesh wants to do wickedly. I think I might have said the spirit, but if I, if I did, let me correct myself. The flesh wants to do wickedly because like the Apostle Paul said, he's sold under sin. You know, the, the, the flesh has its own law. It serves the law of sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. But the spirit wants to do righteously. So there's that war constantly back and forth. And all of us know about that war. All of us fight that war. It's a daily battle being in this faith, being in this truth. Now, I guess Deacon Hakar doesn't fight that war. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Deuteronomy 6 and 7 now. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when, them, what's the them? The law. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So you, you're supposed to continually talk about the law, the law, the law, the law, right? According to this law here in Deuteronomy. What does the word Deuteronomy mean? Second book of the law. So this is a law. Now let's keep reading. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. You know what that's called? A phylactery. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So now let's get an image of that. Let's get an image of uh, of uh, a phylactery. All right, bear with me for a minute. I'm going to show you what a phylactery looks like. Here we go. And I believe, let's get the definition of phylactery. Phylactery. Phylactery, right? A small leather box, also known as a frontlet, because it goes right in the front of your head. You'll see. A small leather box containing Hebrew text on vellum, and the Hebrew text is the law, worn by Jewish men at morning prayer as a reminder to keep the law. Now, they got that custom from us, 
all right so the small hat is they got that custom from us now let's go to the images there you go there's the phylacteries right there now just like the law says let's get back to the law it says and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand so there you go that's what is called a phylactery you clearly see it here and this illustration up here that's a frontlet because it goes right on the forehead or right over the forehead between the eyes just like the law says and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand so everything that you're set forth to do with your hand you need to remember the law so you don't sin because what is sin transgression of the law right first john 3 and 4 and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes there you go they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes that's that little box there okay so there you go let's take a look at that there you got the uh you got the uh the frontlets not the frontlets i'm sorry the phylacteries and there you got the frontlets now like i said i don't see members of the sakari wearing this so that's one law that they do not keep that's one example furthermore as we read on and thou shall write them upon the posts of thy house now, I guarantee you, if I were to go to the house of Alazar or the house of Deacon Hakar, I wouldn't see the laws written on the posts of their house. That's another law that they're not keeping. Now, remember what is written in the book of, uh, I think it's Galatians. You that's under the law, you're in debt to do the whole law, or you can't be justified by the law. I just gave you two examples of laws that these guys are not keeping all right let's keep reading and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates now like i said i can go to their houses i know for a fact i'm not going to see the laws there's over 613 of them i'm not going to see the laws written on the posts of their house or the or the or their gates okay if they have any gates okay so there's a couple of laws that they cannot keep. Now, the thing about the law is you have to, let's read it again, Galatians 3 and 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. What is the curse? For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So there you go. We just read a couple of examples. Hey, the phone had to chime on that one. We just read a couple of examples in the book of Deuteronomy, right? The sixth chapter, which they cannot follow. And the evidence is when you watch their group, you don't see their members with phy phylacteries. You don't see members, their members with frontlets. And I guarantee you, if you go to their houses, you're not going to see the law written on the posts of their house or the doorposts of their house or their gates. So come on, man. Stop playing games here. You know, the Apostle Paul said, when I became a man, I did what? I put away childish things. These guys are being childish. The scriptures say in, your, in understanding, be ye men. We're not supposed to be like little children in understanding. We're supposed to be men. And some of these guys don't carry themselves as men. Yeah, they lack understanding. Let's, let's keep reading. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Heavenly Father. So even if you were to keep all the laws, which is impossible, you're still not justified by the law in the sight of the Heavenly Father. The only one that's justified is Yahweh Shai. He's the only one that, that's been made perfect. Okay? We're waiting for Yahweh Shai to make us perfect, not the law. All right? And uh, let's get the book of Isaiah 64. So these guys need to stop boasting about something they can't keep. That is the law. This is the, the, the Apostle Paul spoke about boasting, man. And that's what, that's what these guys are doing. They're boasting. Yeah, we can keep all the laws. Stop it, dude. Stop it. <laughs> no, you can't. I just showed you a couple of laws you cannot keep. Isaiah 64. And uh, what is it? 64 and 6. But we are all as un, as an unclean thing so even if we now the apostle um, not the apostle i'm sorry solomon i think it was king solomon he said 
Man at his best state is vanity. So what would that mean, man at his best state? Meaning this is a guy who keeps all the laws. He's, he's perfect in keeping the law, which is impossible. But let's just say he's perfect in keeping all the law. What did King Solomon said? Man at his best state is vanity. Vanity is another word for evil. Okay? That's in the sight of the Heavenly Father Yahweh, man. <laughs> you guys need to stop it, man. You, you know what you're doing? You're showing us just how much of a novice you guys really are. You have you 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 you, you lack you lack a lot of understanding. I mean something this simple. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. I mean, what don't you understand about that? This is why the Apostle Paul said, I shall be found of him not having mine own righteousness. I think it was the Apostle Paul that said that. Either the Apostle Paul or Peter. Matter of fact, I'll get that scripture next. Because that's a powerful scripture. But we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. There you go. You can't get around that. And we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Now let's get that not having mine own. Oh, hold on. Oh. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Now let's get that not having mine own righteousness. Well, what does that mean, not having my own righteousness? Yeah, that was the Apostle Paul who said that. He said that to the Israelites in Philippi. Meaning, you, 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 you know, you're boasting in the law. Yeah, I keep all these laws. You're boasting in your own so-called righteousness, which is really a filthy rag, pursuant to Isaiah 64 and 6. Philippians, the third chapter, the eighth verse. Yea, doubtless... And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Yeah, the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai, which a lot of Israelites don't have. Especially that group. Hell, they don't even really believe in Yahweh Shai. When their leader said that Yahweh Shai doesn't need to be worshipped. So you know he doesn't have the excellency of Yahweh Shai, and neither does that group. Okay? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Now, the Apostle Paul described himself as a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were known to have the knowledge of the law. They were experts in the law. And the Apostle Paul described himself as a Pharisee of the Pharisees. So you know he knew about the law, backwards and forwards. And yet he said he count all that loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Check that out. Okay? <laughs> Uh, yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And you know, he had, uh, Apostle Paul, he had a high position among the Roman government and among the, the Sanhedrin. You know, the Sanhedrin and the, the different councils of uh, the Israelites back then, the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, they all thought before he became the Apostle Paul, they all thought highly of him as Saul. And he said he counted all of that but dung to win Yahweh Shai. He said he suffered the loss of all of that. The accolades that he had among those guys. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. There you go. And I'm sure he had perks. A lot of perks being, uh, being, a, uh, being a Pharisee of the Pharisees. All right. Uh, I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but dung. That is shit that I may win Yahweh Shai. There you go. And Yahweh Shai was not thought of too highly by the, by the top Pharisees, the top scribes, the top lawyers. Yahweh Shai was not thought too highly of. As a matter of fact, they despised him. Only a few of the uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes actually believed in Yahweh Shai, which means they would have actually uh, have to understand the prophecies in the Old Testament to understand who Yahweh Shai was in the spirit. Only a very few of them understood. The majority of them despise Yahweh Shai. Let's keep reading. Now, again, let me read that from the top so it makes sense. Philippians 3 and 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count <coughs> all things but loss 
for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahushai, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that is shit, that I may win Yahushai, and, and be found in him, in who, who's the him? Yahushai, because it's all about Yahushai anyway, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, right, which takes us back to the law. Guy boasting in the law, boasting in his own righteousness. It's not the law that makes us righteous, people. It is Yahweh Shai that makes us righteous when he changes us, okay? A lot of Israelites don't understand that. We're just rehearsing the righteous acts. That's all we can do. Judges 5 and 11, that's the law. We're just, this is a rehearsal. Can't keep the law perfectly. That's why the Sakari guys don't have no phylacteries, don't have no frontlets between their eyes, which is part of the law. Now, will we need that in the kingdom? No, because we're going to be under the under the new covenant. The new covenant says the law will be put in our inward parts. So we won't need no phylacteries to remind us of the law or frontlets between our eyes to remind us of the law. Because the new covenant is the law is going to be put. We're going to be we're going to receive bodies that is programmed not to sin. That is programmed with the law. So we won't need that. Okay? A lot of these guys don't understand what they're involved in, man. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. That's good. That, which is of the law. Huh? But that which is through the faith of Yahweh Shai. Right. When it says the faith of Yahweh Shai, what does that mean? The faith that Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, he's going to deliver us, man. We're going to get a, a seat on those chariots that Yahweh is coming back with, with the angels. When certain destruction comes in the form of fire th from the missiles and the chariots, we're going to receive a seat of deliverance in those chariots. This takes us back to Isaiah 26. Let's read that, man. Let's read Isaiah 26. That's our faith. That Yahweh is going to deliver us. Let's read it. Isaiah 26 and 20. It says this. Come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Who is the Lord's people? The elect. Matthew 24 and 30, right? Come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. The chambers is talking about the chariots. When the destruction comes. That's going to be our chambers. And shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Because it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy the society. One hour. That's some serious destruction, man. Right? Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Yeah, the destruction that Yahweh Shah is coming with. We can read about that in Isaiah 66, 15. Isaiah 63 and 1. All right, the great destruction that our Lord is coming with and many other scriptures. So we need to be delivered from that. And that's our faith. You know, the law can't give us that. The law ain't going to be the one to physically remove us from certain destruction. <laughs> the law ain't going to do that. Yahweh Shah is the one that's going to do that. <laughs> now, technically, again, if you, if you look at Yahweh Shah as the law personified, then yeah, the law can do it. But I'm saying the actual man, Yahweh Shai himself, is the one that's going to do it. Not the law, man. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. This is what we're waiting for. We're waiting for this, that prophecy to drop. Right? For their iniquity. And at the same time, Yahweh Shai is going to destroy all the kingdoms of the world. When they're trying to come together in this new world order, Yahweh Shai is going to put a stop to all of that, all of that nonsense. Psalm, the second chapter. The Most High in the heaven shall laugh, laugh at the heathen, right? Because Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy all their different societies, especially Esau, Edom, with their new their, their hope of a new world order. Yahweh Shai is going to destroy that. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. There you go. For their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So we got to be delivered from that. That's where the 20th verse comes in. So again, this is what is meant by the faith of Yahweh Shai. Philippians 3 and 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Yahweh Shai. And one of the examples of the faith of Yahweh Shai is that we believe Yahweh Shai will save us from that coming destruction that he's going to bring. 
All right. And there's a scripture where it is written, confession is made unto salvation. Now, if we wholeheartedly believe this, guess what? We're going to be delivered. We're going to be saved because we believe in Yahweh Shai. We believe he's going to deliver us from the coming destruction. And really, this has nothing to do with the law. It's just belief in Yahweh Shai. Like uh, Elder Peshai made a good point in his video. He said um, of the, the you had the two male factors. Uh, you had the one on the right and one on the left. Now, the one on the left was berating Yahweh Shai. He was talking shit about Yahweh Shai. And the one on the right corrected him. He said, look, man, Yahweh Shai didn't do anything worthy of death, but we did. Yet he's being put to death. Then he said to Yahweh Shai, uh, he said, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Then Yahweh Shai said to him, I tell you, this day you have been sealed. Meaning he became a member of the elect of Yahweh Shai that very day, right before he was put to death. Now, what law did he keep for him to receive such a, such a, a, a blessed uh, uh, for him to receive such a beautiful blessing. Huh? What law did he keep or kept the male factor on the right? But yet he was saved in that very moment. You see? So you got these guys that's boasting about the law. They don't understand these scriptures. All right? Um, let's read the ninth verse again. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the, the faith of Yahweh Shai, the righteousness which is of Yahweh by faith. It goes far beyond the law. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made con conformable unto his death. And, you know, if you really believe in Yahweh Shai, by default, you're going to keep the law anyway to the best of your ability. All right, because Yahweh Shai himself kept the law. Yahweh Shai made a statement because he was being accused of uh, coming to destroy the law. Because once again, you had Israelites that, that, that were not too bright. They didn't understand uh, the, the coming of our Lord. And this is what our Lord said, uh, Matthew 5 and 17. He said this, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Because Yahweh Shai was being accused of destroying the law. Just like us, by these wicked Jews, we've been accused of, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, when Deacon does his video, Deacon, uh, Deacon Hakar of Sakari, when he does his live video, he's going to say that. He's going to say something along the lines of that, that we don't show respect to the law. Great Millstone. You already read the title. Bad news. Great Millstone says the law can't save you. No, that's the truth. It might be bad news for you because you think you're going to be saved by the law. No, the Savior is not the law. The Savior is Yahweh Shai. Okay, so our Lord was being, this is why our Lord said, if they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. So we've been persecuted by this group, saying that we don't have respect to the law. When that's, 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 that's the furthest thing from the truth. Those guys learned the law because of us. Beginning with Elder Apostle and down, uh, those guys at Sakari learned the law because of us. They were introduced to the law through us. Because they came up underneath us. <laughs> anyway, Matthew 5 and 17, Yahweh Shai said, Look, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Exactly. Fulfill what was written of Yahweh Shai by the what was written of Yahweh Shai by the prophets. Did he not fulfill it? Look, so what's a good example of that? Psalms the 22nd chapter. When David said the um they pierced my hands and my feet. They didn't pierce David's hands and feet, but they did that to the Lord, so that was fulfilled. You know, and other scriptures in the Psalms concerning our Lord. Other scriptures in Isaiah, Isaiah 7 and 14, a woman shall bring forth a child. Was that not fulfilled with Mary? You know, a virgin shall bring forth a child, meaning a young woman. When you go into Hebrew for the word there in virgin, the word there for virgin in the Hebrew in Isaiah 7, meaning young woman. So there you go. So we didn't come to, Great Millstone, we, we, we didn't come to destroy the law. We're putting the law in a proper perspective. We're telling you, uh, Deacon Hakar and, and certain members of the Sakari who believe you can keep the law 100%, who believe you're justified by the law, we're telling you that you, you err not knowing the scriptures. We're not justified by the law. All our righteousness is as filthy rags. Okay. 
All right, let me go back to the video. Let's listen to some more. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, <coughs> Bashem, Rakakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, Labakari, Yahweh, the name of the Heavenly Father. So, yeah. Heavenly Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by Hashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the name of the only begotten Son, who was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their sins. By Hashem, which means in the name of the Holy Spirit, the volume of the book, the Spirit of Truth, Shalom, Labahari, and peace to the elect. That's the men, women, and children whose names are written in the book of life. And what you see before you is uh, a premiere <clears throat> of a live stream, I believe it is, that's going to come up uh, in about two hours, okay, by uh, Deacon Destruction, it looks like, De Deacon Destruction Mode, okay, and, um, whatever, uh, says what, uh, bad news, Great Millstone says the Lord can't save you, and I guess the uh, narrative is to try to prove that the good news is that the... <laughs> The, I guess the good news will be that the Lord can save you. And again, that would defeat the whole purpose of Yahweh Shai. And we've brought out many examples of that. And again, I'll say this to you individuals that believe that the Lord is what is going to make you righteous or to make you. The Lord can save you. The only way that would be an accurate statement, the Lord can save you, if you equate the law with Yahweh Shai. All right. If you say that Yahweh Shai is the law personified, which you wouldn't be wrong in saying that you would be absolutely correct then in that case the law can save us if you equate the law with being Yahweh Shai the Yahweh Shai being the law personified but if you say anything other than that then then you err not knowing the scriptures simple as that you holy will make you acceptable by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai why is it that Yahweh Shai actually had to get up on the cross if he committed no sins if the man committed no sins, there was, and he should have just been able to put his feet up and then sit on earth and live forever. No, he had to crucify the flesh. Yeah, because uh, I was going to bring that scripture out, but I didn't. Um, there was no law that could, uh, let me see if I can find it. A law that could give life. that KJV okay yeah I didn't get to read that let's read that Galatians the third chapter Galatians 3 and 20 let's start there uh, Galatians 3 and 19 wherefore then serveth the law it was added because of transgressions. Yeah, like the Apostle Paul said, I had not no sin unless I knew the law. Uh, the law gave sin its strength because what is sin? Transgression of the law. There's a scripture where it says, even a foolish thought is sin with the Heavenly Father. Now, how many times a day do we have foolish thoughts, those of us that are in the truth? So, like I said, and I'll say it again, it's impossible for us to keep every law to be justified by the law. Because even if you have a foolish thought, that's sin, which is transgression of the law. How about if you look at another man's wife in a suggestive way? You've committed adultery with her in your heart. That's a violation of the law. Really, that law is punishable by death. Okay? So this is why we have to be changed, man. And the law put within our inward parts. Because it's impossible for us to, in this flesh... In this captivity, in this flesh, it's impossible for us to keep the law perfectly to be justified by the law. Now, if Deacon Hakar is saying anything different, he don't know the scriptures. And he should just come down from teaching, man. He has no business teaching. Galatians 3 and 19. Wherefore then serveth the Lord was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels, in the hand of a mediator. And who is that? Yahweh Shai. Okay. 
the promise was made. All right. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is in one. Yahweh Shai is our mediator. The fact that we need a mediator proves we can't keep the law perfectly. If that's the case, why do we need a mediator? <laughs> is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid me to know. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, such as Yahweh Shai does, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Oh man, come on. How is Deacon Hakkar going to get around that? Huh? Let's read it again. Galatians 3 and 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, meaning no. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, and we're all looking for what? We're looking for life. We ain't looking for death. We know about death. This society we've been in, this captivity we've been in, represents death. So we know only too well about death. Those of us that understand and know this truth. We know only too well about death. We want life. We want to live forever. There's no law that can make us live forever. Okay? Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to make us live forever. That's part of the blessings we're going to get for believing in Yahweh Shai. Totally believing in him. We're going to live forever, man. We're never going to die. There's no law that can do that. Now, I'll say it again. If you're looking at Yahweh Shai as the law personified, then there's a law that could give us life. That's Yahweh Shai. Outside of that, come on, man. Is there a law then against the promises of God? God forbid me to know. For the, if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Now, we know the answer to that. Righteousness is not by the law. Righteousness is by Yahweh Shai. He's the one that makes us righteous. But the scripture have concluded all under sin. That includes you, Deacon Hakar. Okay? That includes you and you, you guys at Sakari. You're all under sin. And you continually sin. Hell, you have your, you have your freaking head covered, man. That's a sin. Transgression of the law. The Apostle Paul said a man ought not to cover his head even as he is an image and glory of the Heavenly Father. And the Apostle Paul was taught by Yahweh Shai himself. So don't tell me, no, there ain't no law on that. There's a law where it says a man ought to pull his head. That's in Ezekiel. All right? Because a man is not supposed to have long hair. So don't tell me there's no law on that. You err not knowing the scriptures, man. The, the Apostle Paul even said, doth, doth not even nature itself teach you that a man ain't supposed to have long hair, but a woman, her, the, her, the, her, the long hair is her glory? Are you a woman or are you a man? What, which is it? You guys at Sakari that desire to have long hair. Are you a woman or are you a man? Is it not written, remember this, and show yourselves men? Isaiah 46 and 8. Come on, man. Don't play around, dude. Do not play around, all right? Play, tricks are for kids, man. Quote that old... Uh, cartoon, uh, cartoon uh, slash commercial back in the day. Tricks are for kids. Okay, you guys are supposed to be men, men in understanding. Let's keep reading Galatians three and twenty-two. But the Scripture have concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Yahweh Shai might be given to them that believe. And who is that? That's the elect. Okay, the elect of of the nation of Israel. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should have afterwards be revealed. And what is that? That's Yahweh Shai. Faith in Yahweh Shai. That's how we. Just like the, the male factor on the right, he had faith in Yahweh Shai. And guess what? That's what saved him. He made a confession unto salvation. He said to Yahweh Shai right before he died, he said, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And from that moment, he was sealed. How about that? Wherefore, and he didn't keep no law. As a matter of fact, he was a breaker of the law. That's why he was being punished. That's why he was being crucified. How about that? He was a sinner. Okay? 24 verse. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. And that's why we show respect to the law. Now, Deacon Akar, if you say anything different, you're a liar. You're a freaking liar. If you say any different, anything different in your live show, you are a liar. All right? We have taught... 
all our students to respect the law. Great Millstone, we have taught all our students to respect the law. We always teach our students to keep the law to the best of your ability. I always say that. There's plenty of videos of me saying that. Keep the law to the best of your ability. I believe in the law, but I also know that the law can't save me. I also know I can't keep the law perfect to be justified by the law. Okay? That's why I look to my Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right? I want Yahweh Shai to remember me when he comes and bring that wrath. All right? So, anyway, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Yahweh Shai. See, it all goes back to Yahweh Shai. That we might be justified by faith. There you go, man. Not by the law. Like Apostle Paul said, I, I want to be found of Yahweh Shai, not having my own righteousness. What does he mean by that? Meaning boasting in the law, like some guys do. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you brothers were edified. Next one.